So let's pick it up where you know we left in you know our previous meeting, and just to I don't know if uh, JL Smith, I don't know if she can she, uh, he or she can hear us, but uh, we are doing the labs of uh, chapter three. Hey, there you go. Hi. <laughs> uh, are, are you Jenna? Yeah, I'm Jenna? Jenny. Yeah. I uh, so I've been following oh, Jenny, on, Jenny, on, yes. on EDX, okay. and then I um. I found out about this book club and I was like, this is perfect. Right. So I was hoping to kind of just get an idea of what you guys do. And, and I like the idea of, of doing the labs and things. So, right. Right. You know, uh, uh, welcome, welcome Jenny. And, uh, as I explained, you know, you, you can, you can check the, the video before I'm, I'm just going to do a little introduction here, but, uh, I noticed that, you know, we are a cohort, uh, two, right. So in cohort one, uh, we, they did more the theory. Okay, the chapters, you know, 3.1, 3.2, until uh, 3.7, 3.8, something like that. But then, uh, I guess there was no time, you know, for, for the labs. So I, you know, thought that, you know, our contribution, you know, to that F, to this effort is to work more on the labs and then discuss the theory, you know, whenever is, you know, it's appropriate. So I'm doing the labs. This is more like a, you know, a, sli a slideshow, you know, uh, you can do it with uh, Slidify. Slidify, and uh, in the in the book, they use the Boston uh, data set. Uh, I don't know if you know that there has been some controversies, you know, with that data set in terms of features that are not, you know, in in now in in our days, they're not that, that appropriate. Okay, in fact, you know, Emil, you know, the one that did the tidy models for the chapter, uh, he, the, he calls it unfortunate, you know, uh, features there. And you can, you know, you, you, you can check on your own you know, what, what we're talking about. But uh, we are trying to get away from that. Uh, uh, apart from so forth, there's some, uh, there's some uh, weird stuff there in the, you know, in that data set in terms of how they did the survey, you know, how they gathered the data. And apparently they just, you know, some of the data is just, you know, uh, kind of clip limited, uh, you know, to certain, to certain ranges. So, uh, when I'm going to use the Boston, uh, I found this data set called the Melbourne Housing Market, and you can uh, check it in Kaggle. Okay. In fact, uh, you can check the, you know, in my GitHub uh, here. Okay. I'm going to post it again in the chat. Uh, this is the address for the GitHub where the, you know, the, the information, uh, you know, is available. Um, let me check here. Okay. That I don't get. Okay. Uh, what is the chat again? Okay, here. <laughs> it's always, you know, it's always hiding here, the chat. Okay. So that, that, that's the GitHub. So you can you can get the, the link for the for the data set, et cetera. So we started doing the labs. Uh, we did, you know, we started with a simple regression, linear regression. And we explained that uh, the simple regression model, what is called the OLS, ordinary uh, linear uh, regression, what the model is does is that it tries to fit the best line possible, the best line in terms of minimizing the square of the errors. So each of those points in that line, what it's trying to do is minimizing, getting a location in that, you know, in that uh, uh, two dimension plot where you minimize that, that kind of error and then you draw your, you know, your best fit. So we're discussing it, and then using that data set. That data set is from uh, is, is 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 a is a real estate data set, you know, with uh, uh, you know uh, residential uh, uh, residential uh, uh, soul uh, units, and we were studying the relationship between price and distance. And distance in that data set is defined as the distance between you know the residential unit. And then the center of the business district. In other words, the, the center of the of the town of Melbourne by, by itself. So you can assume that, for example, the greater the distance, the lower uh, the, the the price of, of the unit. And that's where you know we're trying to you know study with with this model. So we did the the fit right. Okay, we did the fit with the you know base base R you know, nothing fancy. And then we got 
from the from the model. Uh huh. Hello. Okay. So from the model, uh, we got the coefficients, which is the intercept when the predictor is is zero, right? Is zero, and then the slope of the of the line, because you can define a line basically within between two points, like in geometry, right? Two points, you define a line. But also you can define it from a certain single point and then the slope, okay? The, the, the change in X between the change in Y. So that is the distance is going to be, this number here is going to be the slope, okay? Uh, beta, beta, beta one, uh, the estimate of, of beta one. And as you can see, that slope, uh, that coefficient is negative. So it's telling you that the higher, uh, the distance, the lower the price of of that unit in terms of the estimate of what we're trying, you know, what, what we're getting, and also the intercept, as I as I explained, is when you know x that x is zero. Then uh, um, let me go back. Okay. Then R, because remember that R is, uh, you know, strong, uh, statistic, uh, is strongly, uh, that, that has a strong tradition in, stati in statistics. Uh, so in R, you have this function called summary. So summary, you can use it, for example, if you do a summary for the data set, it will give you, you know, each of the, each of the variables, and then it will give you the mean, the max, the mean, the, the percentiles, et cetera. In this case, summary for the model, what I'm going to give you is some of the uh, statistics for that model. And in this case, for the intercept at the distance, for example, you get, again, the coefficients, the estimate, the standard error, okay, which is explained in the book as, you know, how, you know, how wide will be that estimate, okay? So if you get a confidence interval that I want to talk, you know, in the next slide, you get it, you know, adding that standard of error and subtracting the standard of error, and you get that confidence interval. So that coefficient should be around that, that range. Then you get the t-value, right, the t-statistics, and then you get the p-value, which is the probability, in this case, the probability that that coefficient could be zero, okay? So the higher this value, uh, no matter if it's positive or negative, the higher the T value, the lower is going to be the probability that that coefficient is going to be zero. And that's what the P value really is, is telling you. It's kind of a hypothesis testing. And I know that Anne uh, did a comment and I you know, researched a little bit and I put in the, in the GitHub, there's an article talking about the p-values, about the significance, you know, the, the appropriateness, et cetera. Because this is more, you know, in the frequentist, you know, statistics aside. If you go a little bit beyond the, the frequentist, the Bayesian uh, statistics, then you won't, we won't hear about p-values anymore. This is more, you know, like an introduction to the statistics uh, world. Then we have, in R square, right? In what is called a multiple uh, R square there, but it's an, it's an R square. And what R square does is uh, it tells you how well the model explains the variance, the variance of the, the response of Y, okay? So for example, if we have an R square of one, that means that the model is explaining 100%, it is explaining 100% the variance of that variable, in other words, a perfect fit, right? If the model is, if the R square is zero, then that means that that model uh, doesn't give you any any uh, any explanation on the variance of the Y. Uh, one of the things that I mentioned you know, when we were finishing the uh, the meeting is that uh, you have to be careful with R square because even though it's a traditional metric you know, to try to see, you know, how well the model explains the, the why, the response. Uh, one of the problems is that when you add features, no matter how, you know, how random or how insignificant they are, they're going to raise that R square, 
Okay, so if I if I do a, a you know if I add a random variable there, you know random numbers, it's going to raise that R squared, and it's going to be deceiving. Okay, it's misleading. So one of the things that uh, you know people people try to do, you know, as statisticians try to do, is just you know adjust that R squared to compensate for features that they you know don't don't bring value to the model. Okay, so make sure that you know, you understand the difference between the R square and the adjusted R square. And the adjusted R square is the, is the metric that you should be, you know, looking here. Then we have the F statistic and the book also mentions the F statistic. And what it does is that it's another hypothesis testing in that it's, it's uh, doing a test of the whole model. So for example, is our model statistically significant from a model that also only has the intercept. In other words, if all the coefficients were zero, okay, that's your that's your null, that's your null hypothesis. In other words, is the intercept insufficient to ex explain, you know, the variability of the model? If you add uh, features and then get a lower p-value, that means that those features are statistically significant. They add to that model. And that's what the F statistics, you know, in a nutshell you know, does. Okay. So any questions about the summary? We're good? Okay. So let's continue. Okay. So this one uh, is a visualization. Uh, usually, you know, it's, it's uh, easier, you know, to get, you know, what's going on with the models, you know, by, 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 by plotting, plotting them. So this one, I got it from the library ggpubr, okay, which is a library that is, you know, the intention is to produce uh, 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 graphs that can be published, okay? That's what the pub, pub R means, and it uses also ggplot. So in this graph, we have the points, you know, from distance and price, right, that we're trying to predict. We have the blue line, which is the best fit, that's the line that goes from the intercept to the, you know, and the slope. That's the line that you see that it has a, a, a decreasing slope. And then you get in this, uh, from this library, you get also the equation and the R square, the coefficient of determination. Okay, so you get it all in one, one package. Uh, just a thing, and I, I was trying to research and I, I couldn't find, you know, the answer that I was trying to do, but this, uh, you know, the intercept and the coefficient in this formula is kind of rounded, okay? So maybe it makes sense in the report, you know, to round it, but make sure that you understand that this is rounded. This is not the true measure. The true measure, as you can see in the previous slide, is or are this, okay? So uh, another, you know, another thing that you have to be careful with. That. But you can use that, you know, that, that library has a lot of, uh, you know, nifty, uh, uh, you know, nifty uh, uh, G plot, you know, G G plot uh, 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 geoms, okay, geoms. Um, sorry, use. Ricardo, uh -huh. did, yes. did you, did, did these numbers uh, are from mm -hmm. the, the geom smooth or the start reg line equation? I think it's the uh, start the, reg line. From the start reg line, yes. Okay, okay. Me, so, because, back, yeah. Uh, uh, from the start reg line, yes. Okay. Because yes. you are the, the, the jump smooth and then they start reg line equation to uh, to see what are the uh, the oh. value for, for the data. Okay. Yes. If, if if we if we comment this, for example, this you will get this plot without the comments from the equation and the R square. And okay. start call. Uh -huh. Yes. So okay, those, thank you. Those those are uh, you know those geoms are added by the library, you know that they're available in the library, okay. And also, if you get you know if if you see the documentation of the library, also you get someone is doing the someone is doing the the patio here, okay. Sorry for that. Uh, if you if you go to the library, you'll get other other metrics. For example, AIC, BIC, etc. Okay. Okay. That, that's good to, you know, that's part of the things that you can, you know, you can use, uh, you know, for, for your reporting. Okay. So 
let's look a little bit into the element set, the, uh, the element object. And remember that you use names uh, for the data set, but you get this, you know, names, right? In this one, for that this object, what you get is what is inside that object. So for example, if I do LM, LM fit dollar sign, right? Coefficients, it is going to bring me, right? It's going to bring me those, those coefficients. But also I can name, there's a function, and there's always a function in R, you know, to make it easier. I can do the coef, okay? In parentheses, LM dot fit, and also get the same information. Okay, you can try it. Uh, you, you'll get the same information here. Then for the confidence, uh, for the confidence in, uh, in uh, uh, confident, uh, interval confidence, uh, confidence intervals of uh, element of fit, which is the ones that I was speaking about. Let me go back. This one's okay. The estimate, which is the coefficient and the standard of error. Well, you get them, you don't have to do any, you know, any math. You get them with this function, okay? Conf int lm dot fit, and you get the confidence intervals. In this case, a ninety-five percent confidence interval between uh, the in, uh, for the intercept and also for the distance. Okay, so your coefficient is going to be around that range. Remember that we're talking about you know a distribution here of that that coefficient. Okay, then. Something that I learned, uh, you know, way back when I was, you know, uh, uh, studying, you know, the first course of data science, is that sometimes the intercept. Uh, sorry for the for the noise. Somebody's mowing the, the patio. Um, uh, sometimes the intercept, uh, because is you know, you get it right off the bat when x is zero, for example. Sometimes it doesn't give you. A good, you know, a good idea of what that intercept could be in other places of the line. In this case, for example, when the distance is zero, then you get that intercept, right? You know, that this figure, which is the, the coefficient, right? But if you want to change it, for example, to get, okay, I want to see where is the intercept by using the mean, okay, of, of the distance, which could be more, more relevant. So what you do is that you add, instead of doing only the distance, you add this, uh, this function, okay? You add the i, you know, the intercept, and then you tell, okay, uh, take the distance. Okay, let me see where I'm at. Okay, take the distance and subtract the mean uh, from it. And, we, and what it's going to do is that it's going to give you the slope, the, it's, it's not going to change, the slope won't change the same line, but then it's going to move that intercept from the zero point then to the mean point, okay? And that could be more relevant, you know, the, the, depending on what you are trying to, to model, okay? Did anyone know about this, this uh, little hack? Um, okay, I thought that, that was the identity mm -hmm. function. I think it, 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 it is the identity function, the i. Right. Uh, and then this makes the things that you said, like, but right. I didn't know that I could do something like that. To be honest, I didn't. Uh, yeah. You can move. So I, I was, yeah, I wasn't. Yeah. If, uh, for example, you can move it to a point that is not a mean. For example, you want to move it, you know, a little bit up, a little bit down. You, know, you you can do it with this with this function, and that could and the, be more information. And the about. intercept, and the intercept value that changes. It's going to change. Yes. Okay. The slope is not going to change. Okay. The slope is the same mm -hmm. line, but then the point of interception that is going to change. Okay. So now, for a mean of, of the average distance, which is eleven point three five nine kilometers. Now we get an intercept of this value. Okay. Yeah, it, it, it's something that I got from that, you know, the regression course that I found, you know, very interesting and sometimes useful, you know, in, 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 some, in some cases. Okay, so then the lab uh, keeps going in terms of, you know, the difference between the confidence interval, you know, for the predictions, 
and then the confidence interval of the prediction itself, okay? And I remember when I, you know, stumbled into this, you know, I got a little bit confused. And then I said, okay, let me see, you know, how, you know, we, we could do this. So you know that the interval confidence is the one that comes from the mean, okay? Because that's what you are doing with that best fit. You are trying to see minimizing the, you know, the, the least squares. That means that, you know, the mean will be the value that is going to be contained in that, in that line. So from the mean, you're going to get a confidence interval. And usually that confidence interval, whatever number is, is usually a lesser band, okay? You know, a, a, a more narrower band than if you do the confidence intervals on the predictions, the prediction interval. Okay, you know, the interval of confidence in the prediction. So let me show you more or less what I'm talking about here. Okay, I got, let me see it here. Okay, okay, can, can you see the, the plot there? Okay, so what is happening is that the confidence interval from the line, okay, from the best fit, usually is this yellow line. Okay, it's like a narrower band because you are taking that confidence interval from the mean, okay, from that line, okay? In terms of the prediction interval, the 95% of the prediction is from those points that you see all around, okay? So because those points, they are not fitted in the line, then the interval uh, grows, okay? That's more or less, you know, how you know, it's just explained between this confidence interval and the prediction intervals. Usually what you see, for example, in the Geon Smooth, remember that? Uh, 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 let me check here. Where am I? Okay, I lost the thing. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, da, 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 okay. I think I got something here, wait a minute. Okay, let me, I have to close that menu here because I cannot access my, <laughs> my presentation. Okay, let me see. Uh, it's, it's right there, it's blocking my, my, my browser. Let me, let me see if I can do this. Sorry, guys. <laughs> it's just blocking my. Okay. How do you close that menu, uh, Federica? What well, has the chat? <laughs> what? Okay. Got it, got it, got it. Okay, okay. Here we go, here we go. Here. Okay, so you. Uh... Yeah. No, yeah. I didn't know. Yeah, because that, there was something in the chat and it was blocking, you know, the, the, the browser there. Okay. So when you do the Geon Smooth, okay? when you do the Geon Smooth, you can say there's another argument that says SE, okay, which are the interval of, you know, the confidence intervals for that line. That's what you get the confidence, that's where you get the confidence intervals from that line, which is that mean, that mean value that is trying to minimize you know the errors of, of our predictions so that's the one that you get you know you know uh, naturally but then there's another one that is basically the prediction uh, uh, in interval you know the the, 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 the interval 95 percent from the prediction and the thing is that you have to be careful because that's from the point where you are predicting okay from the point of prediction and the band gets wider. So you see, for example, in this case, uh, we took, you know, some numbers. We took 10 for distance, 20 and 30. So you get a confidence interval of this kind for each of those points. But then for the same numbers, 10, 20 and 30 in the prediction, if the interval is the prediction, then you get a much wider uh, band, which is illustrated in this example. Okay, so when you do the prediction, the interval of the prediction, you get this dotted, you know, interval, which is really wide. And we, and what, what he's trying to do is catch all these, you know, points, you know, the, 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 the,
Okay. And uh, he actually uh, adding some new data and, and testing the prediction on new data. Well, here we're just uh, doing the intervals for the prediction within that range, within the range of distance. Okay. So if mm. you go to the, you know, to a summary of the data set, you see that distance is from zero to 48, to 48 kilometers, okay? So we're taking points within. Uh, one of the things that you have to be careful in real regression is about extrapolation, okay? So sometimes the model won't be, uh, you know, uh, as accurate as the model is when you go, go out of that range, okay? So, so that's what we're taking. We're taking numbers from the range of the distance, of the distance per se, okay? Okay, so that's the explanation for the, you know, the difference between confidence intervals and prediction in intervals, okay? And that's another plot, you know, using plot and AB line, you get more or less, you know, you know, uh, uh, you know the fit, the fit for for those for those points, and as you can see, we're going to see more in the when we, we do the residual residual diagnostics, we're going to see that, and you can see it. Okay, there's a lot more variability in this part of the you know of the graph, of of the left side of the graph than in the right side. As you can see, you no, know, there's a lot more variability. Okay, there's more points, you know, around in the left side and the right side. That could tell you that this relationship between distance and price may be linear. Okay, so there's some non-linearity there that we have to, you know, we have to uh, study. Okay. Okay, let's keep going. Okay, so here we go to the diagnostic plots. Okay. And what we're trying to do here is trying to test some of the assumptions that the linear regression model is established. You know, it's the foundation for this linear regression. The first one, okay, it tells you what is the relationship between the fitted values, which is the predicted values, and then the residuals, the errors, the errors of the model. Uh, uh, visually, if you have a model that it has a straight line, that means that those uh, residuals, you know, could be random, okay? Could be random and could be what is called IID, okay? Independent, I, 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 have, I have it here because sometimes, you know, I get confused with the IID uh, thing. Independent and identically distributed, uh, uh, you know, uh, points, residuals. So maybe, you, you, you cannot you know, ascertain it, but you can see that this line, the red line is the, is the estimate line of these residuals. And you can see that it's going straight and all of a sudden it's trending, trending down, okay? Also, you can see from the plot that I was telling you about you know, the, the variability of the, of the points, you can see that here you have an X variability and then here you have a much greater variability. That is something also that violates one of the assumptions of the model, which is that this model should have constant, residuals have constant uh, variance, okay? Then you get a second plot, which is testing how normal, how, how gushing are those residuals. So uh, here in the QQ plot, what you do is that you test that this, these points align with this line. Okay, you know, with the line of the quarters of the, of, of the distribution. As you can see, there's kind of a curve here, okay, that goes a little bit higher than the line. That means that the normality uh, assumption of this, uh, of, of this model is not, uh, you know, is, is, is not there, okay? It's, it's been violated also. Then the third one, is the one that really tests the, the constant variance, what is called the homoscedasticity, okay? <laughs> that's, a, that's a mouthful thing, right? What is the constant variance? And this plot uh, shows the fitted values versus the standardized residuals, the square of the standardized residuals. 
And that line, as in the residuals versus fitted, it should be a straight line. As you can see very clearly, this line, you know, starts, you know, starts straight and then it goes up. So it's showing you visually, it's showing you that that assumption also is not uh, uh, is, is, is not there. Okay, you know, it's, it's violated too. And then you get the fourth, which is the leverage in terms of what are the points that are influencing our our fit. And as you can see, there are a couple of points here. Okay, we 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 could call them extreme values or outliers that they are definitely pushing that fit pushing to a certain direction. Okay. Have you seen this panel plots before for linear regression? Okay. So this is basically you are testing the hypothesis of, you know, of a normality of the residuals, the randomness of the residuals, the constant variance, and also the leverage. Okay. Okay. So now that we are experts in linear regression, right? We cover mo most of the, you know, of, of the basic stuff. Let's, you know, uh, of the, 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 the ante. So let's talk about multiple regression. And basically what multiple regression is, is a simple regression, but with, you know, uh, additional features. Okay, so you add more than one, one, one feature to predict, you know, the value of the response of Y. So here, we're going to then add the number of rooms. You know, we got the distance, right? Now we're going to add the number of rooms of each of the, of, of, of the residential units. And uh, we plug it into the, the model, right? And then we do the summary. And as you can see, um, whoop, 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 don't go. <laughs> as you can see, uh, the p-values are very low, so they are significant. In other words, those coefficients from distance and rooms, they're not going to be, the probability of zero is very low. And then you get an R square, okay? Adjusted R square that is 3396. So from 0 0.055 that we had only from distance, we made a big jump, okay, in the R square. So right now, our model basically is explaining at least 34% of the variance of, you know, of the, of the Y. So a big improvement there, you know, good. Then if you want to get more adventurous, right? You can add all the features of the model. This set contains 13, 13 variables, 13 features, and you can add it just with a dot, okay? Just put price, the, the weekly sign, and then the dot, and you will add all the features there. Okay, and this is a summary of all the features. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about categorical variables, you know, in some of the next slides. So I'll, you know, I'll, I'll pause it there. But there's some categorical variables that then, you know, the model, what it do, does is it does a one hot encoding, you know, to get each of the fits for each of the of those labels. Okay. And here, just looking at the R square, uh, we get a 0. 0.6266 another big improvement. So adding those features apparently is helping uh, understand that model, understand the variability of Y, okay? So, but with multiple linear regression, then comes other assumptions, right? And one of the assumptions in multiple linear regression is the, what is called the multicollinearity. When we talk about multicollinearity, we talk about the correlation between the predictors, okay? You know, between the variables itself, not the variable and the response, but between those independent uh, predictors. And there's one factor that is called VIF, the variance inflation factor, which tells you how correlated that feature could be with the rest of them. And from the library card, okay, we get this function called VIF, variance inflation factor, you plug the object, the model, you know, to that uh, function, and then it gives you a list from all the, the variables, all the features, it gives you a list and it tells you more or less, you know, what is the, the, the VIF for each one. As you can see in this one, in the council area, okay, which is the, basically like the county in, in our, because this is from Australia, remember, this is kind of a county uh, concept, for example, you know, orange, uh, osteo, and 
in Florida, uh, Hillsboro, Miami Day, etc. So you get from the council area, you get a variables uh, a VIF of 1,592, which is extremely high. So probably that feature is interfering, you know, in our model. Okay, because the coefficient, the estimate of the coefficient, the model gets confused when it has a feature that has that high variance inflation factor, and it has to do with the variance, okay, of the of the of, of the feature. So let's do something. Let's take it out, okay, to see, you know, how what is what would be the uh, the you know the the change in our model. So what we can do is we're going to add the features, but then we're going to subtract that council area, okay, with the minus sign. So that's one technique that you can use to then you know uh, you know include all, but then exclude you know cert certain uh, features, and then you have the summary right without the council area as you can see even though the r square uh is lower you know for this particular model uh you see that you know there's more uh you know the features they still have you know their low p values etc and then what you do is that you then apply this this the bif function to that you know uh you know to that model to see if there's some some uh, features that still have a, va a high variance inflation factor. The rule of thumb is that if you have something like uh, five, you know, between five to ten or higher, of course, but the, between five to ten, you should consider trying to or eliminate the feature or try to combine it with another feature so you can then lower that variable uh, variable inflation factor. Okay. Any questions so far? Uh, yes, the, did they mention mm -hmm. about the correlation of the predictors for mm -hmm. selecting uh, with, between them? Uh, right, yes. Uh, precisely, the variance inflation factor could be a function that you can use to, you know, select the ones that they don't have, you know, that strong multicollinearity. So it could be used as a feature selecting, uh, you know, uh, technique. Okay. So in, in effect, if effectively, it does make uh, it does the correlation. Yes. Okay. Yes, but but for example, yeah, you know that that's where the domain knowledge, you know, comes, you know, when you know trying to model this. Uh, sometimes, maybe you have a feature that have a high, you know, uh, inflation factor VIF, but then if you can combine it with another feature that also has that high, you know, combining them, then you can, you know. Uh, get rid of that. For example, you know, doing a rage, a rage of, for example, uh, uh, square feet, uh, you know, the, a combination of square feet and rooms, for example, of a combination of different, different kinds of, of features. Then, you know, de depending on the outcome, then you can try, try to lower it in that way. So you can capture that information because remember, if you eliminate that feature, you eliminate information. And that's something that you have to be, you know, you have to be careful, okay? Yes, Alrighty. because um, that that's not as um, totally correct what I said because um, okay. so the VIF is the variance inflection factor. It measures yes. how much the variance of any of the coefficients is inflated due the multicollinearity in the overall yes. model. Correct. So yeah, um, but. Uh, sometimes, so when you, my, my question was uh, mm -hmm. that sometimes you, so I, for example, didn't use that function, but just okay. made, um, um, taking just the, the numeric variable uh, in my data set and made um, correlation to see what mm -hmm. are the variables that are correlated most, right. more, yeah, uh, cor correlated, and with the uh, with the outcome, not within them. So then uh, you will exactly. be able that, to select. Yeah, th this tells you the correlation between those predictors in this model. Okay, not the correlation between the predictor and the and the response, the dependent. Okay, because you want predictors that are related to that. We we, we don't want to you know get rid of. Them. But if there's a conflict between 
each of the predictors, which is the multicollinearity that we're talking about, then you have to, you know, you have to adjust, you have to do something to try to minimize that because it affects the model, the performance of the model. Okay. Uh, if you do a correlation, let's say correlation heat map, for example, you will see, you will see which are the factors that are correlated, are highly correlated, uh, positive or negatively to that, to that particular environment, to that particular feature. Okay. Uh, remember that we're just, uh, you know, talking about the model. Uh, it's assumed that before doing that, you're doing your data analysis, your EDA, to try to see more or less, you know, get an insight of what are the relationships between, you know, the predictors and mm -hmm. the response. Okay, so you do you do experience. exploratory data analysis before right. with correlation yes. and then yes. go inside the model and try different uh, things to see which one effectively works to give you the, to release the best result. Mm -hmm. Exactly, yeah, the, the EDA, the exploratory data analysis will tell you more or less, you know, how are they correlated? Then you can corroborate that with this, you know, with this function, virus inflation factor, and then see which are the ones that you think are more correlated, and then maybe you can combine it or eliminate one of them. Okay. But be careful with eliminating features because you eliminate information. And that's something that you have to be careful, you know, in, in, in the real world. <laughs> okay. So let's keep going. Okay, so here is a, an, an interesting uh, topic and it's uh, related also to the multicollinearity is that you can use this formula, the formula that you know, is used in R, you can use it to try to get interactions between terms. So for example, remember that in the, in the model that we're studying, we are just adding features, but independently. Right, you know, there's no real interaction. We're not forcing an interaction with. It. Now, what we can do is, you know, put them together. Okay, you know, put them together with in terms of a plus sign and asterisk. So it's saying that I want to check the interaction, not only individually, but interaction between distance and norms. And if you do this, then you'll get another another feature. Okay, you'll get the feature of the distance and the underwinds. Okay, and then you can check, you know, if it's uh, statistically significant, and also you can check the, uh, you know, the change per square and in your in, in your vari variability. Uh, let's check what happened. Right, they are they are just as R square for the model with the plus just no interaction. It was 0.3396, but then. With interaction, uh, then it went up a little bit up to 0.363. So the interaction is is helping the model to then you know predict the, the response. Okay, and you can do this with different kinds. You know, this is more like a like an experiment, right? You know, where you can do you have different items, and then you can do different interactions to see which are the ones. That is that can help the model. Okay, so let's keep going. Then there's another, you know, uh, uh, a method that you can use in terms of the nonlinear uh, interaction of predictors. As we can see, apparently there's some nonlinearity between distance and price. So one of the things that we can, you know, we can explore is adding another feature, okay? Not an interaction feature because we're not going to combine features, but within that feature, we're going to then add a quadratic uh, term, okay? So what we're going to do is with distance, we're going to then, uh, you know, add a, a transformation of distance to the square, okay? And that's the formula that you have. So now you have another term called I distance square, which is the square of that. Uh, it's still significant, okay? Uh, if you if you take the p-value less than 0 0.05 as significant, then it's still significant. And, you know, it slightly, you know, did a tweak in the, in the R, adjusted R square. So we're not there yet, right? We're not there yet, but, you know, it's, it's, it's the exploration of things. So now, because we have 
another 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 a model okay uh, we call it lm dot fit two with that quadratic term what we want to then test with the analysis of variance ANOVA we want to test if there's a difference between the original model with the price and distance only and this one with the with, with the square uh, term okay so if you do this ANOVA what it's going to get you is an F statistics. Again, you know, we're using the F distribution. It's going to give you a value and also it's going to give you a probability, okay, which is kind of a p-value. And in this case, because it's less than 0.05, then you can reject the null hypothesis and say that, yeah, there's a difference. There's a difference between that model and the, the one that we added the quadratic term, okay? And if you do, again, the plotting, okay, you will see, I mean, uh, usually you want to see, you know, certain difference, but right now the quadratic term really, you know, didn't do that much, you know, to uh, try to validate the assumptions that we had before in the, in the original model, okay? But this is the, you know, this is the, the, the cycle that you have to go, you know, in terms of linear regression, trying to see, you know, transforming, you know, predictors, combining predictors, uh, check if the R just the R square is rising, and then doing the validation of the the, the residual diagnostics. Basically, that's uh, the cycle that you know we're doing. Then, if we want to get more creative, you can add what is called uh, a polynomial. Okay, a polynomial uh, fit uh, to the uh, to the feature to the environment. And in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to create different uh, polynomials, different curves, okay, different lines that are kind of wiggly, different lines with a polynomial to the order of five. Okay, so we're going to create basically uh, five, yeah, uh, uh, the intercept, we're going to create five different estimates. One with, uh, you know, power to one, power to two, and power of five. Okay, with the distance. And as you can see, uh, all of them in the summary, all of them have a, have a p-value less than 0 0.05, which the no significance. And also our adjusted R square also increased. Okay, instead of doing only the quadratic, now we are adding more, uh, you know, power terms. Okay, let's put it that way, polynomial terms. And it's, it's, it's kind of helping, but of course, one of the problems that we have here is that, okay, you can say, okay, let's continue, you know, adding uh, polynomials, right? Let's, let's do six or seven or eight, et cetera. And that's not a good, you know, practice according to the book uh, because then you are trying to overfit <laughs> your data. In other words, you're incorporating again, that noise that usually doesn't give you a generalized uh, term. So uh, at least for the book says five to the order, you know, if you can, you know, manage it five, to, to the order of five is, you know, good enough, you know, to try to see if there's an improvement in the model. And apparently uh, there is. So that's uh, the conclusion that we can derive from here is that definitely distance and price are, you know, they have a nonlinear component that is affecting the linear assumption. Okay. Okay, then uh, to the last, I did, you know, this is something that, you know, was covering the book, you know, a, a, a little bit different, you know, they, they square uh, the, uh, they transform the, 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 the feature to the square. Uh, here, what, what I'm doing is trying to see if the square root, instead of going up, going down, trying to see the square root of distance can have an effect on, on the model, if it can improve the model. Uh, looking at the adjusted square, definitely not. Okay, we got the 0 point, 0 0.055, now we got a 0 0.051. So that transformation is not, you know, it's, it, it, it's not helping, it, it's not helping. So at least, you know, in your book, you said, okay, you can scratch it. You know, I, I did this and it didn't work. Okay, so any, any questions? Uh, what time do we have? Okay, we're almost finishing. Okay, so let me see if there's something else, okay. Um, I think the, the, the last thing that we want to talk is qualitative predictors, uh, but maybe we can start in the next meeting uh, because, you know, I, I don't want to intrude in, 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 in anybody's schedule. 
and we're approaching 12. So uh, we can, uh, this is going to be short, it's going to be about five minutes, but basically what is is showing you is how does the model in R, the linear regression, uh, deals with categorical variables. In other words, not the numbers, but, you know, factors, uh, you know, la la label, la label data. Um, in a nutshell, what it does is that it does a one hot and cold, okay? But the thing is that, uh, your, your, for example, if you have a label of, in this example, you have a label of three, right? Uh, bad, medium, and good. You're going to see in the summary, you're going to see only two labels. Why? Because the, the, the one that you don't see is basically the base, is the zero base. And the others, what I'm telling you is, what is the change of the coefficient? What is the change of the response from the base, okay? From from the base, it, it, won't, it, won't, it, won't, it won't show it won't show it, but that's how you have to interpret. So maybe we can take some time, just you know, to explain it, you know, as as as, loose as we can, explain it in the, in the next meeting. What do you think? <clears throat> yeah, that's okay. Uh, that that's absolutely that. So in. in... Yeah, so maybe ne next time we can start with this, which is the last, you know, the last topic in the lab on the qualitative uh, predictors of that label data. Yes, uh, I think we, we should uh, keep going with this chapter to finish it and then uh, move forward. So I don't know, we'll, uh, let me see what... Um... So sign up. Uh, I'm doing classification next. Ah, uh, uh, okay. So Michael, uh, so what do we do? Uh, how long it will take for you, Ricardo? Maybe half an hour, and then Michael can introduce the chapter well, four, this, or you need the whole session. I believe this is going to take about ten minutes. Really? Okay, okay? that's, this is that's not that, fine. that much. Yeah. Okay? okay, but but it's, but it's good because you know uh, sometimes it get confusing the labels when you say okay but where is that label that is not showing what is happening here and it you know it, it takes a little bit of uh, mm -hmm. of explaining uh, uh there okay, okay. So about okay. 10 minutes tops yeah this, this is really that. good thank you looking forward to chapter four <laughs> is okay yeah, is it okay if i yeah, sorry it, it, sure uh -huh. uh, jenny uh, oh, is it Okay, yeah. if I join for the rest of the book club, or um, I don't know how how attendance. Oh, yes, please, you're classes. very welcome. Uh, uh, this yeah, is an open book you. club. So. Great. Well, there's one yeah. person not here today, but we're a small, but you know, so you'd be like our sixth member. So okay. you know, we'd yeah. love to have you. It looks like from the mm -hmm. Slack. I don't know if you've seen this already, but there are some open chapters too. If you want to sign up, there's. Mm -hmm. uh someone named daniel signed up for chapter seven i don't know who that is yes yes um, daniel um uh, do we know who that is, is that yes 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 it's um, uh, he will do the other chapters okay. as well uh he he's doing other club so won't be able to attend all these okay. meetings but uh, he will tell us about it's very good a, a couple um of chapters are open now too yeah. Uh, if you want to sign up, uh, as Michael said, you can uh, put your name in the Google Sheet. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, if you like, there is um, the YouTube channel uh, for this book club for the first course where John uh, illustrates uh, how it works, mm -hmm. basically. And the, the first video of this course where there is an illustration of all the um, resources for for the book. So Thank you're very well. Yeah. Awesome, yeah, I've kind of been sleuthing <laughs> through some of the, the, the materials already, so. Great. Great. All right, okay. Uh, thank you all for attending today. Uh, we'll see you all uh, next week with Michael presenting uh, chapter four. Mm -hmm. Uh, and Ricardo finishing the last, <laughs> uh, so wrapping up uh, and putting the clear things for uh, chapter three. Um, have a good day, rest of the day. See you next week. See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye now. Take care.